to the night child of used prints. We are looking at Prince's 1990 Graffiti Bridge album. We are on day 16, track 16, the song Graffiti Bridge. Now, Graffiti Bridge is a song that, from my experience, a lot of Prince fans really don't like. Um, it's a song which Peach and Black, for example, I think I've called it sappy. Um, some people tend to say, oh, it's, you know, it's too saccharine, it's too sweet, it's too sugary. Um, now, I'll be honest, the way I tend to look at it is I tend to think of it as a song in a musical. I tend to think of it, you imagine, you know, on stage, you've got kind of a happy group, they're singing in a musical. And I think that if you kind of, um, you know, look at it like that and imagine it as a stage play, it kind of makes much more sense. I think so some people said, oh no, it's too anodyne, it's, it's facile, it's, it's too upbeat and cheery. And I think you really have to imagine it as um, a song in a musical. And I find that really works for me. Um, it was actually written in 1987. It was actually one of the first songs recorded by Prince at Paisley Park. So, I mean, this, you know, it's, it's quite an amazing thing. He gets into Paisley Park and Graffiti Bridge is one of the first tracks he records. It has Claire Fisher on it. Claire Fisher, his work, his work is just remarkable. Um, he's a sad loss and he, you know, he's one of the greatest influences on Prince's music, one of the greatest collaborators Prince has ever had. Um, just truly awesome work and his string work here is, as usual, phenomenal. Um, you've got some amazing people on this track. You've got Sheila E, you've got Bonnie Boyer, you've got Levi, you know, you've got Mavis Staples, Tevin Campbell, so you've got everybody on here. And it's also a song that, as far as I know, has never been performed live, which has never uh, performed uh, you know, on any tour at all. Uh, it starts off with these amazing, uh, gorgeous strings, as I said, by Claire Fisher. You've also got this kind of tumble of drums. And then it goes into kind of like a, a very... I can see the argument, you know, that kind of upbeat, kind of sweet melody. Um, it, you have to be in the mood for this song. I think if you're not in the mood for this song, it, you can you cannot really take it in. Whereas sometimes, if you're in the mood for it, it can kind of work. Um, it's also interesting that um, every Prince song has some interesting parts into it. I think every single Prince song he's ever done has some interesting aspects to it. As I said, I kind of think this is a bit like a musical. You have to think of it in those terms. It's got of it has lyrics like the love of a boy the love of a girl. I think you have to imagine someone on the stage sort of talking about, you know, the love that comes from a warm heart in a cold, cold world. And it's very much kind of like that kind of feel to it. Um, it very much works on the refrain of everybody's looking for love. Um, you've got some interesting parts. You've got these hand claps at 210, which are quite nice. You've also got, um, towards the end, of, this is the part of the song that for me really improves this song. It's when Prince starts to let it go and kind of just, you know, let his voice go a bit and be a bit more open with it. Um, there's a great part actually where they talk, there's a line saying um, there was a future worth fighting for and it's sung by Tevin Campbell and then Prince sort of says uh, you know sure you're right and then Mavis says you know uh, about the future worth living for she talks about you know I'm a living witness so in a space of like you know uh, a line you've basically got three different people doing different parts you've got Tevin then Prince then Mavis which is quite nice um, you've also got the kind of um, nice chorus end where everybody wants to find graffiti bridge it's quite interesting for me that a lot of people think this song um, you know, was written because Prince needed a title track, he needed to put something in here, but obviously the fact that it dates back to 1987 means that he had this idea first, so it is quite interesting in that sense. Um, it does divide fans, as I say, it's, it's, it's perhaps um, uh, interesting as a title track because there's got a lot of pressure put on a title track, you know, a title track can't just be another track, you think of Sign of the Times, you think of Purple Rain, you think of All Around the World in the Day, and those title tracks are so embedded in your mind and so kind of um, you know completely encapsulating what the album is about and perhaps Graffiti Bridge the title track doesn't really fully encapsulate what Graffiti Bridge the album is like. I think Graffiti Bridge is one of those albums where you can have phenomenal amazing tracks and then sort of other album tracks that get a bit lost. This is not for me an album where it's like you know, 7 out of 10, 7 out of 10 and 7 out of 10. This is like 10, 6, 10, 6, 10. You know it's just so the moments of genius are unparalleled. Um, there, there are other songs that don't quite match those levels of genius, but then I think, you know, if we had a, an album which was consistent with songs like, you know, Joy and Repetition, uh, Question of You, you know, uh, you know, Thieves in a Temple, I mean, that would just be an awesome track, but an awesome sound. But I think that, you know, having all these songs gives it a great mixture because they're a real family sense, you know, of this album. That there's so many different aspects to it. It's quite interesting. I think that's the thing about Graffiti Bridge. There's so much to it. It's 17 songs, but it is, a, in a sense, a really big project. And I think, in some ways, you could argue that musically it varies more than even some bigger albums like, say, Emancipation. I think the different ideas and the different sounds of this album are actually, you know, are quite amazing, quite a kaleidoscope of different functions. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow for the final track on this album. Really enjoyed doing this. The final track is The New Power Generation. Part 2.